name is Ricardo Sainz. I'm Carlos Sainz. Jaime, in Spanish. Maybe Jamie. I just graduated from medicine uh, and I'm doing my internship. Well, I'm a positive person. I see the positive side of everything. I'm kind of stubborn. When I want something, I, I know that I will get it. I like to work hard. Uh, I like to have fun and be with my family. Uh, growing up in Chihuahua was great. Here we have like everything. It's not like a really small city. I can imagine growing up anywhere else. I think it's one of the best places to to grow up in Mexico. Uh, a normal Monday for me is waking up. I like to take my time in the morning. Right now, I have a newborn, so there's no there's not always the same. Do my coffee, my breakfast. Usually the Mondays are always kind of like, like stressful days because it's like beginning of the week. I don't have a exactly time to get into my job. So it's always like wake up really early, go to the work and come back home and eat and rest. And maybe go to the gym if I'm free. If I don't have like many work, then I go to the gym to do some workout. And after that, I go back to the house, eat dinner, watch TV and sleep. Before that, on Monday, it was like a kind of lazy day because you know that the week just starting and you coming for a weekend that you always have a lot of plans to do. One of my favorite things to do in Chihuahua. I really love music. So for me, it's to go to concerts. I love classic music. So I, every Tuesday, the orchestra from, from the state of Chihuahua, they play different things like Beethoven or opera or something like that. So there's something that I, I really like to do. Another thing is like to try different restaurants, like new restaurants and new food. Just like hanging out with my friends, I think. Uh, Chihuahua is progressing like a city, like in the culture, and it's growing a lot, like in the urbanization, and a lot of industry is coming here. Yeah, I think it is progressing as a city, like the buildings and, and everything. Uh, I do think Chihuahua is progressing, yes, but slowly. No, the quickest all the Chihuahua people wants. Carne asada. 
dos. Uno, dos o tres. Ya acá la que es para que grabe cuando se cae la bicicleta. How I do cook carne asada? Uh, looks really easy, but it's not because you have to do a lot of preparations. First thing you do is uh, start the fire. To start the fire, you need the charcoal. To start the fire in the charcoal, uh, you can use many, <clears throat> many ways to do it. I think the best way is just to do like a fireplace, like a little house. Then you put some paper on the middle. Then when the fire starts uh, feeling really hard, you clean the grill uh, with a uh, half of onion. So you take the, all the, the dust. Then after that, you have to wait a little bit because at the beginning, the fire will be really, really hard. So you have to wait for a, a few minutes, maybe a half an hour, uh, when you or when you feel that the fire is not not really strong, you put the meat on it. I recommend it to use really good meat, kind of thick, maybe two fingers thick. Don't flip it like many times. You just flip it once. And I don't use many species to cook the meat because I really like the flavor of meat. The only thing I put on my meat is salt and sometimes pepper. And the carne asada is done. And don't forget the guacamole. <laughs> the cooking culture in Chihuahua is like varied. We have, we use a lot of different things. The cooking culture here, it's pretty rich, I think. Like in old Mexico, the most important here is like the chilies, the use of the chilies and the salsas. Uh, from a lot of cultures, like mixed here. Like we eat sometimes food that is from kind of like Americanized, like a lot of burgers, hot dogs, uh, also like a lot of food that is actually from Mexico, like tacos and stuff. We eat a lot of mm, beef because we we have a lot of cattle in Chihuahua, a really good cattle in Chihuahua, so we eat a lot of beef. Meat, everything, that, that's the description of cooking culture in Chihuahua, cook meat. to drive like if you was in war. <laughs> I consider that I am a good driver. I consider myself a good driver. Yes, I think so. <laughs> I do consider myself a good driver, yeah. <laughs> to be a good driver in Chihuahua, I think is to be always thinking about all the other drivers. To be a good driver in Chihuahua, you have to be really careful. It not just depends on be you a good driver but you need to take care of the other drivers, so. Just like concentrate on your driving, but at the same time, 
concentrate to don't bother like, the other people. Yes, I had been in like three crashes, I think, but not really big ones, just small crash. And my first crash was in my dad's truck. Uh, I was trying to get into a highway. Uh, I was in a stop, but it was kind of a weird stop because it was in a 45 degrees, something like that. Uh, so you had to be like turning your neck to see if the cars was coming to get into that highway. So I thought the person that was in front of me, he was going to start driving because I saw the car coming really far. So when I was doing like this, I just start driving and the other person didn't start. So that's the, that, that was the crash, but it wasn't really bad. are a culture that lives on the past. We have to respect their culture. They're kind of difficult culture to understand. Yeah, they're really strong people. Some of them, they even live on caves in the mountains. I, I can ima can't imagine how, uh, how the life of a Taramara is. They are like um, Ethnia. They, they live really far from the civilization. Most of them, they live on the mountains uh, in La Sierra. Like the Tarumara people, they are like really quiet. They are not open with us, they're just with themselves, like the, with their own like people. They have different way to live. It's like they don't like to live like in the modern cities or they don't like to live in a modern way they are like they want to still living like in the past they didn't want to be close to the civilization why they that's why they live like in the mountain the ones you see here in the city are the ones that maybe are a little bit open on the way to think like here they usually ask for money in the streets or or food. Some others, they don't work and they live uh, from the money that uh, the ladies collect on the streets. Some of them are like normal people, like they are already like working, like in construction, in other like works. And, but I don't know how is the, their lives in, back in their home, like in the Sierra. The life of the Tarumaras, of the family of the Tarumaras, is really difficult. I think the life of a Tarumara family here in the city is uh, the father goes to work. Most of them, they work on construction. Uh, I do work in construction. I have a construction company, so I've been hiring uh, Tarumaras guys for work. They're good workers. When the government or the important people uh, knew that there were a lot of mines in the, in the Sierra, like silver and gold mines, they started to like wanted to get uh, all the lands for the mining or for cut trees, for the wood. So they take them out of their lands. So that's why there's a lot of Tarumars here asking for money because they were living really good at the mountains. Uh, they were like having cattle and harvest corn and, and vegetables and beans for their own food or hunting. 
But when the people start to take him out for the land, they have to come here so they could have like a place to live and something to eat. But I had this uh, special experience in a hospital, a small hospital we was doing in La Sierra, in the place where they live. Uh, we tried to hire them, the ones that live in the in the mountains, uh, but they didn't want it to work. But they was day, every day, on uh, close to the place where we was building the hospital, asking us to give them free things like materials or even food. That's an experience that I had that I that makes me like think bad about them. Is sometimes I think that they kinda rude. But when I think all the things that happened to them, that they were taken out of his land, I think that's why they're kinda rude. Corruption. The police behave, I think, like any country. It depends on how the people is behaving. The law enforce, enforcement here in Chihuahua, I mean, it's good, but sometimes it's like a poor system. In every place of the world, they exist good police guys and bad police guys. So some of them, they do their work perfectly, and some of them, they don't. Something happened, like a shootout or a robbery, like sometimes they like, take a lot of time to get there. Sometimes you think like it's even in purpose, you know? I think the most problem with the police is that not a lot of people want to be a police officer, so there are not too many. Traffic police get you and you're really a hurry, in, a, in a hurry time. You know that the guy is going to start to make a ticket. It's the normal way they do it, but takes really long time. So sometimes it's something you don't have to do, but you offer the guy to pay like the half of the price of the ticket on that moment. If there's a problem, they sometimes take too long for answering the call. They don't ask, like, for the money. They just kind of, like, give you the opportunity to offer them money. They take more importance of the things that are not that important. They cannot tell you, hey, you, give me money. No, they don't do it. They just start, like, thinking a lot about, are you really want me to give you a ticket, guy? Sometimes they are just looking for oh, these guys are drinking in the streets, or oh, these guys aren't driving good, or little things like that. But, and like the real problems, like they don't solve them that well. They're trying to to tell, hey, uh, you can give me some money so you will don't get a ticket and lost or your next day in the police office. But they don't actually ask for money. They, they 
they never ask for money. I don't know what causes them to act like that. Maybe they are afraid the, to get into the real like problems. Maybe they do ask for money, but when they're like really, really big problems, you know? I think a lot of people think that they are not really good. But maybe, maybe they, they do ask for some money when you're talking about something really strong. I don't know, I cannot imagine. It's easier for them to like, don't go after the real serious problems or maybe they're afraid or, or maybe like the, they have a pact or something. But I think the real answer is because it's easier to... They kind of want you to give them some money because his payment is not really good. And there are people that risk their lives in their job, so you're not risking your life in, the, in your job, you're just doing your job, but they are like really risking their life, so. The government should pay them more because they're doing uh, dangerous work. Something that I can't change personally, but that has to come like from all the way up, like from the government, from the president and everything. And they don't do any, they don't do much to change that. I will try to change the law in Chihuahua, uh, doing a filter of fighting the bad police guys and just keeping with the good guys and hiding new ones. The, the orders that they received from the persons in charge, like, I think that's a problem. Many of the Chihuahua population, they think bad about them. They don't feel safe with them. Some beliefs uh, about the law enforcement that we uh, like say that, like we don't like them. Like sometimes, like the people doesn't respect them. But I just think that people doesn't uh, trust in them. I think Chihuahua has a future. Yeah. I see Chihuahua in the future as growing as a city. Uh, we're growing in a lot of healthcare, hospitals, uh, aerospatial industrial is growing. So in the future, I think Chihuahua is gonna be an important uh, city about aerospatial uh, industrial. I think the Chihuahua is going in the, in the right direction, like, just because of the people that lives here, like they are really hardworking people. There are coming a lot of industries, so there's gonna be work for the people. What we really need is to have good government. It, it's not as, as dangerous or as, as, he, as heavy living here in Chihuahua, like in bigger cities like Mexico or Monterey. And I think it's going in a good direction. 2010, 2011 was the years when the drug dealers and all that kind of stuff uh, start going really bad. But right now it's stabilized. It's a really big city, so it's growing really fast. Uh, that people will know about Chihuahua that it's a safe place. I think the news, even not just Chihuahua, the news of Mexico, that people here seen in other countries, they're exaggerated. I want to, the people to know about Chihuahua is that it's a, a cool city. It's, it's a nice place to live. Uh, it's a quiet place in comparison to other cities but still the Mexican spirit. Not bad things happens here. People from, from another state, they're coming here. If you're not in the drug dealer situation, nothing is going to happen to you. I want people to know about Chihuahua 
that is a, a really good state and we have a beautiful things. Not just Americans, I think in all around the world, uh, people have the wrong uh, conception about not just Chihuahua, Mexico. It's safe to come here. I will love uh, the news will don't be so fake. <laughs> yeah, some misconceptions that Americans have about Mexico, I think it's uh, first of all, like the, there is a dangerous place. Uh, there is like a lot of violence, a lot of killing, a lot of kidnapping. And yeah, there is, but but it's not like they think about it or how the movies show it. It's uh, like the people that is uh, in, in, like the people that works like doing drugs and selling drugs and everything. They are the ones that pays for it. Like they, that they have this. The, 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 they are the people that get killed, the, everything. But you don't see it like normally in the, in the city, ever. I've been living here like 29 years and I never seen any bad things or, or anything. I will really like uh, the people uh, to know about the good things we have here in Mexico, Chihuahua. They say a lot of things like it's really dangerous, don't come, don't go to Mexico, or don't go to Chihuahua. But if if you are like like in any city, if there's places where it's really dangerous, but if you don't go there or if you if you're not involved in bad things, nothing is gonna happen to you and even you're never gonna see anything like that. I will wish not just Americans to know, uh, all the people from all around the world to know that the news are fake. <laughs> I think the most misconception that the other people think about Mexico is that there's a lot of danger in here or maybe they think like in any street you're gonna see somebody killing somebody or something like that. Uh, the news doesn't say the good things about the country. In general, Mexico, I think, uh, I wish Americans knew that it's, um, it's not, uh, as the movies show it, uh, it's, not that it's not dangerous at all. So something that I would like uh, the people from other places to know about Chihuahua is how many good things we have. I wish they knew more about the, the food. But it is hard because always the bad things are the ones that people know more often. I wish they, they just didn't focus about the, the beaches like Cancun Beach or the big cities. I think they should explore like more regions of Mexico. That we are good people and that we have a, a really beautiful country. We have really neat places to travel, not just Cancun or Cozumel. We have so many other places to visit, like La Sierra Tarumara, it's amazing. And sometimes our government is not the right government, but not everybody is like that. We're gonna be okay. <laughs>